girls. What? <laughs> baby, we need to get to Miss Mi Baby. I was not planning on starting my new year standing for Mia be lying. Mia be bagging. Mia be moving on. Mia be securing. Mia be Potomac. Mia being centered flute. All hell and praise goes to Mia. Bitch, you have officially submitted your position as the future of the Real Housewives of Potomac. We need to get into this. I am chilling. It is, first of all, I'm rude. Happy New Year's Eve. Wait, is it New Year's? <laughs> Somebody read me what they said, Carlo. There's no S after year. It's Happy New Year. Fine. Happy New Year Eve, Raindrop. We have so much to talk about. Mia broke the internet tonight. Here I am making black eyed peas, honey, in my kitchen. I was preparing on staying at home. My New Year Eve was going to be just me, the African, the dogs, watching some television, listening to Pastor Torre. I got a tithe to the church because every year, I tied an additional amount of money to the church to bring in the new year. So I was going to do all that. I had a nap. I'm child. I was like, good. So here I am minding my black owned business, baby. And I'm scrolling down Instagram. And Mia posted a picture of her legs, hip, and body, baby, spread eagle, wrap around some man's body as the black SUV is in the back, baby. And then she's showing off some ring with the caption 4424 as if she's getting married April 4th, 2024. Mia, I don't know if you know this. You have to get divorced first before you can get married again, bitch. I don't know if the ink is still... Is the ink even used, bitch? You, did you go to Michael's, Staples, Office Max to buy the pen to sign the papers? I don't even know if you've done that yet. So let me tell y'all. As you all know, Mia and Gordon are separated okay Mia is talking about this on the new season of Potomac now look we're not going to recap Potomac one of my raindrops did ask me Carlos I've stopped watching Potomac but I do miss your recaps are you going to recap Potomac and I was like I don't know the thing is this I'm not into Potomac this season I'm just not into it. I'm not into it. Um, I'm just, but we ain't, we ain't here for that. We ain't here for that. We ain't here for that. Um, the biggest thing for me, though, is the fact that what's missing from that show to me is exactly what I'm talking about to you guys before you sip your champagne and the clock strikes 12 and you make out with some random stranger at the club or you leaving the church, honey, after tithing, or you making black eyed peas and eating it. I don't know what y'all do for y'all resolution, child. All I know is Mia's New Year resolution is she secured a bag and she secured her spot on Potomac. Rewind to Mia's first appearance on the Real Housewives of Potomac. I said, and y'all can y'all can y'all can search my tweet. I said Mia is a star. And, and it was the first scene where she was at Wendy's event. She was brought in, I think, through Karen. And she talked about all the plastic surgery she had. And I was just mesmerized by Mia. I said, Mia's a star. I said it. She's a star. And Mia 
having the inability to always tell truths <laughs> is why I said, forget Michael B. Jordan. We're going to call you Mia be lying. Because sometimes she be lying, right? But it's the reason why we love Mia. I love Mia. I think Mia is a great reality star. This is the thing about reality stars. And as the king of reality television, I'm going to tell you what it is, child. The best reality stars are the ones who show up as themselves. They're unapologetic. They're not trying to convince you who they are. They're, they're like, look, this is me. Love it or hate it. That's, that, 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 that's who I am. I'm not going to blame editing. I'm not going to blame production. I'm not going to blame the fans. I'm not going to blame any of those things. I know what it is. I am a complex character. I decided to show you guys my life. And because of that, I'm going to get judged. That's who Mia is. And I appreciate that for Mia. Even when I read Mia on my YouTube, Mia laughs at it. She has accepted the fact that I coined her Mia be lying. She has fun with it. Mia has called me once to read me for Phil. We'll get into that later, child. Because she wasn't pleased with my review one day. And Mia read me for Phil. And the whole time, I'm on the phone like this. Yeah, she read me. She cleared me. We had a conversation. I said what I said. She said what she said. And towards the end of this 45-minute conversation, me and Mia were like, okay, I see you. We're good. But I appreciate that. Mia got some balls to be a newbie of Potomac and to pick up the phone, call me, to read me about a review. Mia doesn't know this, but that's what made me love her even more. I love me some Mia. Mia is great television. Now, Mia has moved on to somebody else. Her and Gordon are separated. The math is mathing because the moment Gordon lost his job because his brothers allegedly kicked him out of the company because he was allegedly doing fraudulent things at the company, um, he didn't have any money left, okay? And Mia feels like this, in my opinion. Mia's like, you marry me for my looks. I married you for your money. I spent your money securing my looks by getting a new vagina, by getting a new face, by getting new breasts, new ass, new cheeks, and new teeth. In Mia's defense, Mia kept her in the bargain. You met me at the strip club where I was playing the role of Diamond from Players Club. In this case, is the DC Club, child. Hey, Mia, be lying. Because Mia said she was a waitress. She was waiting on the rest of the men to come in and get them dollars. You were a waitress. You were waiting on the rest of the men, honey, to get paid. And me, I ain't mad at you, bitch. Do it. Okay. So this is... <laughs> yes, Mia. Honey, I live for Mia, child. Anywho. Okay. So Mia <laughs> met Gordon while she was... <laughs> legs, hip, and body, baby, on the pole, sliding down, allegedly. Anyways, Gordon, who is the same age as Morgan Freeman, Gordon, <laughs> I love Gordon. Gordon, who's the same age as Morgan Freeman, um, met this cute young thing at the strip club, baby, put some dollars in that G-string and said, you come home with me. Okay, Mia decided to marry him. They had an understanding. Mia said, I understand that you're marrying me for my looks. I am going to keep my end of the bargain and make sure that this face never drops. Okay, as long as you make sure that bank account don't drop down to a negative zero. Unfortunately, 
due to matters that happened at the business, um, Gordon got kicked out and they had to downsize their place. I believe they're renting a house to keep up with the Potomac cameras. And Mia lifestyle has suffered. Because Gordon did not keep his end of the bargain, okay, I'm team me on this one. If a man tells you, I'm clearly marrying you for your money, I'm sorry, for your looks, and I'm understanding that you're marrying me for my money, because this is the thing. When you are older than Jesus Sandals and you marry a young woman, you know good and dang on well that this woman is not with you because of anything outside of what's in your bank account. She don't care about your heart. She does care about your heart rate so she can understand when to put in the will, how long she needs to stay with you so she can get the interest on the money that's in your bank account. Drop down, baby. So, Gordon knew that Mia was with him, not because of his looks. And I think Gordon's handsome in a color purple type of way. So, the thing with Gordon... <laughs> the thing with Gordon is he met this sweet young girl, okay, who wore costume jewelry and wore a costume G-string, okay? And a costume cowboy hat as she was riding the rodeo, okay? Home sweet home. They married, they fell in love, they have beautiful kids, okay? Mia has owned up to the fact that maybe I am a gold digger. Who cares? You know, and that's why we love Mia. Mia's honesty when it comes to that is what we love about her. Therefore, Mia decided, since you no longer have the money that I need to keep up with my looks, I'm going to leave this marriage because you're not keeping your end of the bargain. Now, I don't know if they signed a prenup or not, okay? But Mia ain't stupid. Mia knows that in order for me to secure the next man, I need to leave this situation now and find me a man ASAP because Mia is of a particular age. I do believe Mia is in her late 30s. Nowadays, rich men like the younger girls. And the reason why rich men like younger women is because they want to be able to control them and they want to be able to make sure you can have babies for them. Mia, at one point in time, was that younger woman. And what did she do? She had kids with Gordon. That's what happens. Mia knows her clock is ticking. Not her biological clock, but the clock on the plastic surgeon's wall of opportunities and surgeries for her to get in order to sustain a man. Because men nowadays, they want young Miami. They don't want Princess of Potomac. They don't. Sometimes you're aging out of the demographic for these rich men. Hence why Mia is like, I got to do something fast. Without Gordon and his money, my lifestyle is going to be altered. And not only is my lifestyle going to be altered, so is my champagne flute. Okay, Mia had to secure a man and secure her job because for the first time in Mia's adult life, the moment she left the strip club, she has to make ends meet on her own time and dime. Therefore, Mia's like, I need this Potomac job. That's the only income that I have that belongs to me. Okay, now. This man that Mia is seeing, or maybe engaged to, Black Twitter, you guys like me, take no time off. So I can't show his photo because I don't own the rights to it. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I'm going to describe how this man looks. And make sure y'all like and subscribe to this channel, child, and hit 
the notification button too, baby. Okay. So the picture of this man. Okay, he's dark skin. Yes, Mia. She has a type. He's dark skin. He looks to be five foot four. So again, she has a type because Gordon looks short to me on camera. So he's dark skin. He has a TWA, a teeny weeny afro. Um, he's handsome. He looks like a mixture between Forrest Whitaker, um, Gunna, um, a splash of Michael Blackson. Um, and a dash of Michael J. White. That's what he looks like. Okay. <laughs> I think he's cute. And he looks like he, he could be African. So welcome to the club, Mia. Yes, honey, we all get African. Okay. So if this is the guy, he has 101,000 followers on Instagram. Okay. Jacqueline, Mia's best friend, follows him. Okay, and, and he also follows her. He follows Mia. He follows Cynthia Bailey. And he follows DJ Quicksilver from Love and Marriage DC. So in his bio, he says he's a public figure. Um, I'm reading his bio for you guys. So Raindrop, listen up. He's a national radio personality. Um, so everyone's saying he is hood rich. Okay. Hood rich is when <laughs> hood rich is when sometimes if you want to flex, you take pictures with stacks of money and, and put them towards your ear. Like you're talking to Wells Fargo. Hood rich is when you make a lot of money and you still wear the polo shirts from <laughs> Ross, okay? Hood rich is when you have all these diamonds around your neck and your house is rented. So I don't know my man's status, but I will say to you, that's what the streets are saying. They're saying he's hood rich. What I can say to you based on his Instagram is he's handsome. Um, he has interviewed everybody from Gucci Man to Lotto. So he's in the industry. And yeah. So this is who Mia has secured. Um, he looks to be younger than her, which to me is also a gag. Mia left Morgan Freeman for a Forrest Whitaker lookalike, and I could not be more happy for her. She really... She really has figured out life, and I really want Mia to write a book so she could teach us girls, I mean, y'all girls, how to <laughs> secure a man that would take you out the strip club, allegedly, um, secure a ring, secure his business, secure a joint chiropractor franchise business, Secure a divorce once he loses his money, allegedly, and then secures a younger man who is securing you while you're still technically married and you're boasting a engagement ring. And today is December 31st, and you're already talking about the wedding day is April 4th, 2024. Mia is giving center flute vibes. I am so annoyed because I want Mia to be the new face of Potomac. Y'all can read me all you want to. It's fine. Mia is interesting. And one of my raindrops on Twitter said, Carlos, if Mia is the future of Potomac, what does that mean for the show? To me, it means that the show can stop being about these women who don't like each other and really focus on real life story. 
Mia's life is interesting. I don't care anymore about what's going on with some of these girls. The water has run dry. Okay? Mia is interesting. She's like a wounded bird in the parking lot of Target. It's like you walk by this wounded bird and you want to help it. You want to pick it up and nurse it back to health. I want to nurse Mia back into being who she gave us her first season. Mia has so much potential to be the face of the show because Mia is going to give you everything in her power that she can in her real life. I don't normally interview friend ofs. And that's not shade. I just don't interview friend ofs because I interview stars. That's no shade. A friend of can turn into a star, but I don't normally interview friend ofs. I interviewed Jacqueline, Mia's best friend, because I was so intrigued by her and her friendship with Mia. And that interview gagged people. They said, Carla's interviewing a friend of. I said, I know, bitch, right? And they watched the interview, and Jacqueline gained so many fans and followers. And I remember telling Jacqueline, like, I hope you're coming back next season because I want to see the continuation of this friendship. And y'all sit up and brought NECA in, and this is no shade to NECA. So don't take it that way. Why bring in NECA when you should have upped Jacqueline's profile? I, I constantly give people the heads up, like, look, what y'all should be doing is center the show around Mia. But instead, y'all center around Robin, and it was great to see that in the first episode, but now it's... I, I don't want to make this about Potomac, because I, I can't. I don't want to. Carlos, don't do it. Because I don't want people to get offended. So let me not make it about that. What I want to make it about is this. It was not great to find NECA, and this is nothing against NECA. Uh, I think NECA is a beautiful woman with a handsome husband. Um, but maybe NECA should have been brought on next season. This season, you guys should have made Jacqueline a full-time housewife. What we're missing on Potomac is real friendships. And we were all invested in Mia and Jacqueline's friendship. And now that Mia is going through a divorce and Jacqueline is back in her life, we miss how they got back there. And that's unfortunate. If Mia had the right people around her, Mia could easily take over on Potomac. Mia is a star. She is. She's self-deprecating. She's funny. She's whimsical. She's beautiful. And she's she's flirty. And she's she's just... Mia is that girl. I think Mia is giving very much background singer because she knows that the show belongs to Giselle and she wants to get on the right team. It's like when Nene told the girls, get on the right team, get on the right team, right? Mia knew what side to be on. Let's just call it what it is. Nia knew, Mia knew I need to get on Giselle's side. Um, but what's interesting is they need Mia, too. And if Mia knew her worth, I think Mia would say, all you bitches need to get on my side. We need to stop centering that show around certain people and focus on Mia. Mia is the future of Potomac. Unfortunately, they're invested in other women on that show being the future. And the ones who are the future, to me, they're not focusing on. And we need, we need a new first chair. We need a new center flute. And what I'm saying to you guys is Mia be lying is that girl. Mia be lying. Mia be bagging. Mia be securing. Mia is that girl. And what she has proved to us on New Year's Eve, gagging the world, honey, on the shade room, the neighborhood talk, and all the blogs in between, honey, she got Carlos King, honey, on New Year's Eve in his PJs, not on a PJ, but in his... <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Portia, pick me up your PJs, please. Oh, I'm in my PJs, honey, making black eyed peas, child, and I'm vegan. It ain't for me, honey. It's for the world. And she got me in my humble abode talking about her. That's power. Think about it. I am spending my New Year's Eve talking about Mia. If that ain't power, I don't know what is. Mia, congratulations. Congratulations. I will shoot you a text and let you know this too. Bitch, you did that, and I'm here for it. My hope, though, is that those around you are here for it too. And on that note, let me finish my cooking. I love you guys. Happy New Year Eve. Happy New Year. If I don't speak to y'all tomorrow, thank you for making my 2023 magical raindrops. I love, 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 love you. And I'm so grateful and thankful for you all. Seriously, I am. I really am. And I hope you guys know that. And if you've been living under a rock, I am taking this podcast on the road. And my first stop is Huntsville, Alabama on Sunday, January 21st with Melody Cherie as my guest. It's a live conversation in front of a live audience. So anything can happen. Tickets are still available. Go on Huntsville.StandUpLive.com. Again, Huntsville.StandUpLive.com. I'll see y'all soon.